Hey riders, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Training Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures and today I'm going to teach you how to load, unload, and tie down your motorcycle onto a pickup truck. Let's get started. So before we get into actually loading the motorcycle, it's important to first step back and know the equipment that you're using. Know the vehicle, in this case a half ton pickup truck, no problem for carrying the 530 pound Honda Africa Twin that we're going to be loading. We know that the straps that we're using have more than enough capacity or weight rating to handle the loads involved. We know the tie down points that are recommended for strapping this bike to a vehicle as recommended by Honda and we also know the weight rating of the aluminum ramp that we're going to be using to load the bike. So important is to know all of that stuff in advance and make sure you're safe with what you're doing. Also make sure to inspect your gear properly. You might have been using the same straps for a while and just as it happens time goes on, tears develop, maybe they've sat in the sun too long and they're getting a little frail and dried out. Don't use torn straps, get rid of them, start fresh again because anything damaged definitely is not going to have the same weight capacity or capabilities as a new strap would. So, Once you're absolutely sure about your weight ratings and the equipment involved and that everything is ready to go, it's time to choose your location. You can do it on flat ground or you can make it a little bit easier on yourself by finding some kind of a berm to back up onto, especially if you're going to be single solo trying to do this alone without anybody to help you get the bike up the ramp. It's a really good idea to try and get the tail end of that ramp up a little bit higher to the, the loading point onto the truck. It's just going to make things easier. Okay, so once you've found an appropriate berm or something like that, it's time to lock down the vehicle, make sure it's absolutely secure. If you have four wheel drive, four wheel drive in park is a good idea. Parking brake on and also you can use something like a simple chalk like this behind or in front of one of the wheels to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so once you're sure the vehicle is secure, it's time to do a quick walkthrough and sort of a, a pre-walking of what you're going to be doing. You get the bike right here besides you, walking alongside it. Are you going to have the footwork and the space, the ability to get up to where you're going along with it? Now, ultimately, you'll have somebody else helping you along to make sure, and it is great to have a, an extra set of hands involved. Um, in this situation, GMC's new Multi-Pro tailgate, it's great. It offers us this extra footstep right there to work with. If you don't have a step like that, you can use like a simple motorcycle stand. Keep it, you know, again, make sure it's going to be stable for you to be able to walk up along with the bike in this case. Okay, along with securing everything else involved, of course, getting your ramp actually secured to the truck is important. So using a simple strap, or in this case, a couple of straps together, going to the inner tie down points there on the truck. And then again, looping under, as you can see here, you're trying to get basically a downward and forward pulling motion to make sure that this ramp isn't going to come out or it's not going to slip up and over. There is a little bit of a lip here you want to try and catch and of course we're ultimately trying to line all this up so that you're using the flush bottom part of this instead of just the tips out here. Uh, but we're pretty good here, we're pretty level and uh, should be good to go with that. So making sure again that it's pulling down and forward and that the ramp isn't going to pop up and get out of the way. Of course, having the bike on the ramp with you is gonna make it hard to move once the weight is on it. But um, again, just point is to be real secure with all of this. Okay, time to get the bike in position to load it on the ramp and pretty easy, of course, straighten and line it all up. And you've got options here with your front brake and of course, having it in first gear, it's kind of like having the rear brake at your command as well through the use of the clutch, so. Get it in first gear, and now I can actually just use the clutch as a brake as well. But uh, right now I can basically use both levers as a way of controlling my downhill descent. It's pretty easy from here on. You're just going to line it up, make sure you're straight. And because we've got such a flat angle of approach here, not much of an incline at all, I don't need the engine or whatever. I can basically just give it a little nudge. that easy. So 
let's get on to the unloading point. Um, you know, we found a great spot for loading the bike, but now the bike is at sort of this downward angle and I'm gonna have to pull it up, kind of back uphill. So we're gonna move the truck and find an easier point to unload from. Okay, so I've leveled out the bed of the truck, which is gonna make it easier to pull it back, but I have made my ramp angle a bit steeper. You have to look at that and know your situation and know your reach, how you're gonna be able to get up to the handlebars once you're at each step of this process. But I know my pathway back, I know I have the multi-pro step down there ready for me, and I know my reach, I've done this before, and I'm gonna be able to handle it. So all the straps off the bike, make sure the kickstand is up. You do not wanna get halfway down and have that kickstand catch the edge of the tailgate, but make sure the bike is in first gear, and you're gonna use both front hand levers to for your front brake and your clutch to moderate your pace as you're going backwards. So the front wheel, as you give it a tug here, can get to a point where it might slide. If you, you don't want to have to rely entirely on the front brake here, first of all, because your reach to it might get a little bit compromised, but also because again, that front wheel can drag in this sort of awkward angle. But I've got my left hand on the clutch, which is again, kind of like having a rear brake back there. And now I can just sort of moderate both levers as I go down like that into an easy landing spot. So again, it's about checking to make sure that your reach allows you to have both hands on those levers, the front levers. If you don't, hopefully you've got somebody else with you or you've practiced this with a lighter bike, let's say, because <laughs> obviously it's quite a position to be in if you're wrong about these things. But uh, yeah, it can be done. Okay, so perhaps it goes without saying that being just one bike in this case, we're, uh, we're gonna put the bike right in the middle. We're looking for some symmetry here, especially as it pertains to the tie down points that we're gonna be using. So if you notice, I already had the front tie down straps in place, basically put the bike right up into the middle of the truck. And you know, in a, in a solo situation like this, I can now use the side stand, go ahead and put that kickstand down and go ahead and start putting my straps in place at the appropriate tie down points on the for, on the triple clamps of the bike so honda and many other manufacturers are going to just tell you that the bottom point of the triple clamp there around the fork tube is uh, the best tie down point basically and so i'm going to go soft strap back onto the hook like that make sure the clasp is closed and while in this moment, or actually before I put that strap there, I'm gonna feel around that point and, and look there and see, are there any bolt heads or any sharp edges or anything? This is really incredibly important because with the amount of pressure you're gonna have on this and the jostling when you're driving on the road and whatnot, any little sharp points or edges or whatever will chew away at the fibers in those straps. And before you know it, you can have a torn strap and a bike on its side or worse. So. Definitely check your tie down points. Know that your hook down there is a secure one and go ahead and start to give it a little bit of pressure like this just to maybe take some of the weight off of the kickstand because now you're gonna go over to the other side. You're gonna try and put the kickstand up and attach the other strap, so. So again, equal on the other side. Make sure that there are no sharp points or brackets or hoses or wires or anything that might be um, between the strap and the bike. So get that all in the loop there. Start to put some tension then on the strap. Not too much because again, I'm gonna upright the bike now, move it more into its upright position. And leaning on it, I can sort of compress the front suspension, compress those forks a little bit, reach down and put tension on that strap like that. So. Already I've got pretty equal pressure on both sides. The bike is vertical. And that's a very important point too, is that you're choosing equidistant tie down points and angles. It's really hard to um, envision this, but if you did have sort of different tie down points, if you're using a hook up here and a longer one going down there or whatever, the effective strength that those straps have, if they're not equal on both sides, it can, it can, allow the bike to slip down and lean again with the jostling and the riding back and forth of when you're actually traveling in your truck. So equidistant points, enough pressure holding down and compressing the forks to say, let's say you're gonna compress the forks about one third of their total travel. Um, this is a feel thing, right? 
too soft and too loose and you'll feel that the bike's still wiggling back and forth, forth an awful lot and so as you're going over bumps you're gonna you know risk having it bounce back and forth too much but um compress the forks about a third like that um the question also comes up about using a fork block some people think it's you know to use a block between say the front of the tire and somewhere up there like on the uh, on the bike itself on the triple clamp to not over compress the forks you know i've never once seen uh, fork seals leak from compressing them like this um, some people say it will destroy seals I, I've never seen that actually happen or gotten any early indications of wear from fork seals from doing that um, but the reason I don't like to use fork block like that is that you're also this way with some of the suspension of the, of the uh, forks there for you so if you do encounter a huge pothole or something like that on the road um, you know having a block in there the bike won't be able to compress anymore, but by not having the block in there, uh, you, you allow that front suspension, those forks to work a little bit in your favor and absorb those imperfections in the road, so. Okay, so in this situation, we don't actually have a front wheel chalk. That's okay, we can deal without it. The main point is to, again, not have the front wheel in a situation where it can pivot or turn if anything does get a little bit out of, out of balance or leaning one way or the other. So simply wrapping a strap around like this, with the intentions of that hook going all the way over to that side. Uh, if it was one long enough strap, it could go all the way, but this one's just a little too short, I know, to go to both sides like this. And you could use the existing strap there, that hook right there, shorten this up a little bit, go back to the other side, and pull this thing through. Yeah, you're basically gonna create a secure strapping point like that to then attach this always with the hook going down and go back and tighten up here just basically trying to create again strap tension going laterally like that not that this wheel is going to turn but this will make sure it doesn't turn now going down here at this point too low right you can still pivot here but as long as you're somewhere up here towards the front you're going to essentially keep this wheel from turning having a, a loop closure like this is really important because as you're traveling now with the bike on the trailer oh and by the way you can get rid of the kickstand get that up and out of the way but as you're traveling you know there is still going to be imperfections in the road and you're going to be seeing the bike jostle a little bit back and forth and when you hit enough of a, a bump to really really jostle the bike um, you can effectively effectively create slack in one side of the bike and without closures like this these it's a little unlikely with soft straps but hooks down here and everything they can pop out by not having that closure there so if you don't have uh, a closure built into your tie down straps uh, consider using like simple zip ties or something to create sort of a loop and, and hold that strap into place and make sure it doesn't come off the hook. The same thing for this end too. If we didn't have this closure on here, I would want to make sure we put a zip tie around here or some kind of a shopping bag twist tie to make sure again that, that if there's ever any slack put on this strap that the hook doesn't fall out of its location. So the rear of the bike, you got a couple of options. One, one would actually be to just go and strap over the rear wheel. You know, you're going to have it in first gear still. That wheel is not going to turn. You can pull down like this, go down to each corner and find a tie down right there. Or it's fine to, you know, again, if there's a weight rating that you need to look at first on the manufacturer of the motorcycle, the existing uh, luggage rack like this could be good enough to put some pressure down like this. You know, some of these racks will tell you that they've got like a, you know, a 20 pound load limit or something pretty light like that. I don't think it's such an issue to go ahead and use one of those as a tie down point down here and get the bike as secure as possible like that. You know, you can compress the suspension just a little bit like that. Go ahead and do the same on the other side. You could also use maybe a kickstand uh, passenger foot peg spot like that like I said going over the tire just find something where again you want to make sure you're not relying only on these front straps in case something happened if there was an accident or whatever you don't want just the front straps of the bike responsible for keeping it secure and on or in the vehicle 
use a couple of other points here again a little more pressure right there compress the rear a little bit <laughs> equal out tension on the other side there a little bit and you're pretty stable you can just give the bike a good shake and a feel and make sure wow yeah you know it's it's suspended it is stuck it is really in a fixed good locked position yet if you did hit a major bump on the road you still got again the bike's suspension working with you to absorb that impact that compression so uh, next thing to do would be to once you've checked everything and you've shaken everything and make sure it's all secure go ahead and start tying up these these uh, loose ends like this you don't want them flopping around the more flopping around that they are doing the more chance there is of course or something possibly wiggling loose so strapping it usually a few times like that and then kind of going once through itself as long as you're not putting pressure on the cam release button right there make sure to not get on that button and you're just fine Okay, and one last final safety suggestion is to, once you're all loaded up, start driving for the first couple minutes, but then stop, check your all your straps and everything. Make sure nothing's moved and make sure you're good to continue on down the road. So, hope the information helped you continue to look for other videos in our Adventure Motorcycle Training Series. Uh, you can like and subscribe and make sure that you're notified when they come out. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out there on the road. So, great time in Adventure.